Hello there synth wavers, Julian here from SynthwavePro.com. In this video, we'll learn how to work with samples, specifically ones which are unrelated to Synthwave. Now, interestingly enough, this track was my submission to the four producers, one sample challenge, put together by Synthwave and Chill Synth artist who goes by the name of Old. Now, I was really honored to be a part of the challenge and I urge you to check out the final tracks from some very talented producers, that being Pashang and Old. The links will be left in the description. But before we get started, please like the video, hit that bell notification button and share this video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you wish to support the channel, please check out some of the links in the description. All right, so let's get right into it. Now, part of the producer challenge is to create a, a track using uh, samples. So let's get right into it here. This was the actual sample that was provided to us courtesy of Pashang, really fantastic synthwave artist. Let me play this out. I'll play out certain sections because I know it's kind of long. So we have a plucked instrument. And it looks like we have some type of mandolin. All right, I'll bounce around to various points of the sample. Now we have a flute or a shakuhachi, as well as a bowed instrument. All right, so lots of stuff going on in this uh, sample and they're all sort of layered together. All of these instruments are layered together. So one of the first things we wanted to do was to get a hold of the stems. So if you're interested in remixes, this would be a good starting point. Receive the stems from the fellow artist you're looking to uh, work with. And so that's what I have going on here. All right, these are the individual stems. Allows us a lot more creativity and flexibility to manipulate the sound. And I've basically titled them. So these are the plucks. So these aren't the right names for the instruments, but they make sense to me. And this is the sort of mandolin. The shakuhachi sound. Or flute. And then finally, a nice bowed sustained sound here. All right, so let's get to work. One of the first things I wanted to do was to extract a portion of this pluck sound here. So I turned my attention to one of these hits. All right, I like this transient right over here. I may have refined it. All right, so this is what I started off with. And so I basically isolated this section and this is what we have going on right over here. Let me play you the equivalent of it. I've obviously added a fade here so it comes in a little smoother, but this is where this hit is taken from. So if I extend my sample, you can see this is what we have going on here. All right, so this is the individual hit that I found compelling. I thought it was very exotic. And once you add some reverb and some delay to it, it really sets it into this sort of exotic space. And with those individual hits, I've created a sequence here. And I'm just gonna play this out. And this is what we have. All right, so if I zoom in, you'll notice that some of the clips are actually different colors. So the green ones are the ones that have been transposed. I have the first green clip here transposed up by four semitones, and this one is actually transposed downwards by three semitones. So, you know, we get this sort of nice melody. Let me engage the metronome for context. Very basic stuff here. This was the starting point for this track. I don't even know what key this is in. It doesn't really make a difference because with this motif, we were able to create a, um, a sort of melody or a starting point here. So I have this right over here at the very beginning. I'm just gonna play this section here along with the bass line. So the bass line was something that we've established once we created this melody, it provided us a sort of anchor point. All 
right, so if you're interested in learning how to create this sub bass sound, I did have a tutorial here. I'll be sure to link to it in the cards, all right? All right, so just as a reference, a lot of these yellow tracks are tracks that were created using the sample. Even in the drum group, I do have two yellow color tracks. I think we're gonna jump to this right away. And uh, we have two of them hiding right over here. I wanted to discuss these two tracks here. One of them is called Drum Ambience. And this is what this guy sounds like. I'll just play it in isolation, then I'll play it along with the drums. Awesome, an underlying percussive groove. I'm gonna enable the drum group here and this is what this guy sounds like. In isolation. This was actually the very same motif we had for our melody. If I disable this Shaper Box 3 plugin here, I'm gonna get into this momentarily, but this is what this guy sounds like. We've heard this before, right? Literally the same melody here. The only difference is that I did not smoothen those uh, initial attacks. So it sounds very percussive, very sort of ticky, and I've used a shaper box here. A really cool plugin here. Let me open this up really quickly. You guys can see which uh, preset I'm using. This is a wonderful plugin I use to manipulate sound, come up with different ideas, and I simply use one of their presets called Bubble Adder. And this is what this guy is doing to the sound. It's creating this nice sort of um, groove to our drum sound here. All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. You guys can experiment and uh, find different grooves for your uh, productions. I really recommend using Shaper Box for sound design and stuff like that, all right? So let's move on to another drum track here, simply titled Drum Hype. Let me play this on its own and then I will play it along with the drums. All right, let me play it with the rest of our drums. All right, so this drum track is using some swooshes and some scrapes, and we created that using a number of uh, plugins here. I'm gonna show you in a few seconds. It reminds me a lot of stuff you hear in Tech House. I'm a huge fan of Tech House music. And uh, anyways, let's get into it. So how do we create this sound? We basically, um, used, I believe it was another instance of Shaper Box. I know I'm bouncing around here. And so this is my Foley MIDI. This is what we originally had, all right? Let me just showcase what's going on here. All right, let me disable the Shaper Box. So I pretty much have the sample playing at various pitches and then I've added a uh, Shaper Box 3 here. I think I may have a different preset here called Groovy Fill and I have an auto pan here and I've captured the audio. In other words, I've recorded this sequence on another track, which is this guy right over here. All right, so we get these really cool, funky, almost like granular synthesis stuff going on here. Really weird, right? This is also how we created this section here. I'll get into this flute sample momentarily, but it's all from basically uh, manipulating the sound. And once we have a sort of pool of samples that were transformed, we can re-inject it into the project. So this is where that drum hype stuff comes into place. This guy here. Now, of course, you're gonna have to uh, chop up the sample, make sure it's aligned to a grid and uh, place some of the transients at key moments in the song. So it kind of makes sense, all right? So that's what we have going on with this drum hit. Without it, with. 
Okay, so another sample we were able to extract from that captured audio was this cool shakuhachi uh, sample here. All right, so we have some call and response between the melody and this guy over here. All right, so I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. If you're interested in seeing some more uh, sound design techniques and some manipulation of uh, samples, just let me know, leave a comment down below. I'll definitely consider creating another video. I don't want them to be too long. I know you guys like these short little videos, all right? I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. And if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for hanging out and consider subscribing and liking the video. And if you've been here since the very beginning, I thank you once more for your continued support. That being said, stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.